All right, guys, Coach Lair coming at you. Topic today, how to know if your instructor or coach is good at what he does. Meaning, can he fix flaws? Can he help actually fix mechanical issues? Can he develop you, right? And this is any specific tool, you know, five tools as a ball player, um, hitting, pitching, speed, base running, whatever, you name it. And, you know, so in 2024, in this day and age, there's so much information out there that everything gets confusing. And the majority of the information that's out there is absolute trash. It's absolute trash. And we've got, and this is this is not like a new thing, but we, you got the younger generation that comes up of coaches and they, there's two categories of them. They either really want to learn or they already think they know everything. And then you got the flip end of the spectrum of guys have been coaching for a long period of time and they are still wanting to learn or think they know everything. Now on both ends of those spectrums, right? The majority of them think they know everything. The majority of them don't treat themselves like a white belt. They already consider, them, consider themselves a black belt, which is why you get most of the coaches that coach the same year 30 times in a row, or like teachers that teach the same year 30 times in a row. There's no assessing and adjusting, right? You know, for every program that I do, and that we do and my coaches do alerts training, we assess, hey, what was awesome? What was great? What can we improve upon? And every single thing, there's always a 20 to 30% change. Every single class, every single program, every single adjustment. And again, back to the topic at hand, if you have two eyeballs and you've actually been playing the game of baseball or softball for a decent amount of time, you can see flaws like that. That's easy to see guys. You know, fat guys watching UFC can see a guy drop his hands or see a flaw or something, a mistake he makes to, to, to lose a fight or, or get beat in a fight. You know, there's a lot of people that can't see the flaws, right? There's a lot of people that can't see issues. They might know something's wrong, but they're not seeing why it's happening. And the funny thing is, is like, there's always a catalyst to every flaw. There's always a catalyst to everything someone's doing, doing wrong, right? So most people will see the result problem, right? Hey, this guy rolled over. Hey, stop rolling over. What does that mean, right? There's a catalyst that caused that kid to roll over. The great coach knows the catalyst. He fixes the problem, which fixes the result, right? It's like a doctor. Most most doctors are just trying to put a Band-Aid on the problem. They'll feed you with medicine, whatever. They don't actually fix the issue. They put a Band-Aid and they want to just fix the symptoms. They want to fix the symptoms. And that's how most coaches coach, right? Most coaches are trying to actually put a Band-Aid on something as opposed to fixing the actual core issue. And it's, and it's no offense to you know, any of those guys. You know, most of them, they just struggle. They don't, they don't know. They're not aware. You have to do thousands and thousands of hours in order to be able to see these catalysts and see the core issues and fix them. And, and so like when I hear a kid say, hey, my coach said I had this flaw, sometimes they're right, sometimes they're wrong, right? But then they don't tell them how to fix it. And that's the biggest red flag is if there's no explanation, if there's no detail given, Right, and there's accountability from the player too. The player's got to listen, right? If that coach can't, can't explain why, and explain what you need to do to fix it, that's not a good instructor. That's not a good coach. He doesn't he, he doesn't know it well enough to be able to speak on it. And if you don't know it well enough as a coach, you need to sit there and go, "Hey, this is the issue that I'm seeing. We're going to figure it out. I haven't exactly seen the reason why. These are some things that might help, but we're going to try to figure out." But too many people, especially in the game of baseball, the egos in the game of baseball. Which is funny, like they're so bad, like worse than like fighters, worse than football players, and there, there's obviously issues in all sports, but it's almost like a fake confidence in baseball. Um, the insecurities, and again, this is all sports, but you know, I'm affiliated with baseball, and I've played all sports, and I've, I've been around a lot of other sports, and I've trained all athletes. It's, it's really funny. Um, that the insecurities will prevent coaches and players from maximizing their abilities. And so that's the other big, that's the big thing. Now, another thing, right? So number one, the, the guy, the coach can't actually fix the flaw. He can just call it out. Number two, the guy is a shit talker or runs his mouth. Um, 
So meaning like he's very arrogant, very cocky. He might run his mouth about players. He might run his mouth about other coaches. He might run his mouth about other instructors. Like there's a there's a high school coach that's super nice to my face. And I'm, there's, I'm sure there's more of them or says nice things to me when I talk to him. And then I hear him talk shit about me behind my back. And the dude, I mean, can't even hold my jock strap, which is funny because most of the guys that talk like that act like that. And the instructor coach world is a weird thing. Like we can help each other out, but we live in a world where insecurity runs, runs real deep. And if you're not a good man, if you're not a strong man, you're not going to be a strong, good coach. It is what it is. It's just my opinion. Take it or leave it. Um, but if you got a coach that's just dogging and, and, and making fun of players or going, Hey man, you need to figure this out. And they do a lot of shit talking, but they're not actually fixing, you know, the issue. Like, okay, maybe I need to have a conversation with this player so he understands. Maybe I'm giving these cues and we're speaking a completely different language, right? That's the issue is you got to get a coach, a good coach or a good instructor, right? The things that you can control that can actually work on communication skills and speak the same language. Because there's a lot of guys that don't speak the same language and then they just say, well, hey, you're not getting it. And there's timing issues involved, right? There's things that people have got to work on when it comes to like, hey, let's work this together. Let's talk together. Let's figure this out together. But I'll have 10 other players or 20 other players or 40 other players. But there's got to be some sort of conversation being involved. Um, Like there's guys that use the Blast app, right? And they'll use the Blast app and they'll say, hey, this this is the metrics that we got. Okay, and they say these are what we need to improve, and then there's not really a plan or any evidence of drills that they're giving to make them better. Um, There's a lot of guesswork involved, and I'm going to tell you right now. Just listen to this. If you don't take anything away from this video, take away this. If you're a parent or player watching this, or you're a coach watching this, 90% of guys in this field don't know anything. They don't have a freaking clue what they're doing at all. They're emulating and copying other people and they're doing what's called conventional wisdom is what they have been taught in the past. They are repeating because they think that that's the way to go. Some cases it's right. Some cases it's wrong. All I got to tell you is if the coach isn't actually able to fix the problem in of itself, the core of the issue, if it isn't able to communicate, meaning he's just running his mouth and saying things and don't make any sense. He's bad mouthing other coaches, bad mouthing other players, instructors, whatever. Those are guys, and to me, this is common sense. If I hear a guy talking shit about another guy, I'm immediately going red flag going, what? why, right? Now, if you're asked for your opinion on someone, hey, this is what I've got, that's 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 okay, right? You know, if someone's asking your opinion, you tell it to them in confidence, they want to repeat it, whatever. I always will give my opinion on something, and I would say the same thing to someone's face. Um. But it's the same thing. Like if I got a guy that's saying, hey, this is the flaw, this is the issue. Okay, well, explain that to me. And they can't explain it to me. Uh, I kind of lose a little respect for them right there. So here's your here, here's your tip of the day. Um, find a coach, find an instructor that knows what they're doing, how to know what they know, if they know what they're doing. Uh, perfect example. I'll give you a little cue if you don't understand what I meant earlier. If a guy's pulling off the baseball, most of the time, right, there's a couple different things you want to look at here. Most people think pull off because, oh, I'm going to get big. Some guys are trying to get big, right? Some guys, their hips aren't leading the way. Their front side leaks, right? So if their hips are behind, their front side is going to pull open. If you drop your hands, your hands get away from your body, you have to speed up. If you have a timing issue, you're going to have to speed up by opening the front shoulder. There's a variety of reasons why someone would pull off. It's your job as a coach instructor to figure those things out. And if you can't see it, learn it. If you can't learn it, give it to someone that can. Out.